a small Oregon city between Mount Hood and Portland built its own gigabit fiber network. This is a lesson in local self-reliance and what a determined community can do. We have two tiers, 100 megs for $39.95 a month and um, a gig for $59.95 with no contracts, no bandwidth caps, you know, here it is and oh, by the way, that's up and down and there's no gotchas on it. The Chamber of Commerce has been very supportive of SandyNet and particularly of the fiber. Uh, I think they can actually see how it can benefit all the businesses. SandyNet came, they came and they talked to us and they gave us a deal we couldn't refuse. Coming out here and getting on SandyNet and upgrading to the fiber and realizing the cost is half of what I was paying was, uh, was a great surprise, for sure. So it really began um, out of a need. The story we always tell is we couldn't get a DSL line at City Hall, and this was back in 2001. Um, so you know, we literally called the phone company at the time and said, we want broadband, and they said, sorry, we don't have it. Um, so the mindset was, well, if that's what they're telling the city, you know, the city government, what are they telling our residents and what are we going to do about this problem? We had just done our first wireless deployment, it worked really well and City Council gave us the direction of deploy that citywide. So over the course of the next four or five years, we built a wireless system that covered the entirety of Sandy as well as some of the outlying areas um, and just were adding customers as fast as we could sign them up. The demands on the internet were just too great and uh, the decision was made to, to upgrade to a fiber optic network. We're using the fiber in a lot of other ways um, to drive economic development. We have a perfect example here recently of um, a five building complex where a company has five different buildings throughout town um, and in our industrial park and, and we're able to provide them a very uh, cheap uh, quote for bringing in uh, their own connected network throughout town. Really fast, I think at that time it was a hundred megabit per second connection for probably a, a, an eighth of the cost of what we were getting. So we were going to get ten times faster than what we could have gotten before for a fraction of the cost. It's a no-brainer. It was a win for us. Being in real estate, I encounter a lot of people that have very specific internet needs, people that do work from home primarily. And um, in the outskirts of Sandy, where internet is not as available, um, that's a big concern for a lot of people. And some people even choose to live closer to town because of it. We've got um, five municipally owned buildings um, throughout the city for the various departments. And we saw uh, huge benefit to being able to connect those with our own institutional network and, and have fiber connectivity directly between each. There's nothing like the reliability of fiber. We've, in fact, that particular line's been in service for, for almost eight years now without a single outage. Um, this fiber just never goes down. Once we had all the city, all the city buildings connected with fiber, we immediately realized savings of, um, in the phone system costs, we were able to, to deploy a new phone system institutionally. It also enabled better communication within the sites, so we've got better res better utilization of staff resources. We hooked up a way for our um, officers to appear uh, via video streaming service um, uh, to the grand jury in Oregon City. Or tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Our officers now come locally here to our, our police station. Uh, they're told what time to appear. Uh, they appear, uh, testify, and then they're finished uh, typically in less than an hour. So it saves us fuel costs, it saves us time. Our highway that goes right through the center of town um, um, is owned by ODOT, the Oregon Department of Transportation, um, because it's a uh, state highway, Highway 26. As it's going through town, all the lights, the, the traffic lights, are owned by them but none of them are connected. The lights aren't timed through the highway. We have a lot of lights. We went and met with them and said, hey, we have a conduit system. We put in the conduit up to all your traffic lights and we would like to uh, give that to you. They'll be able to monitor those from their main central uh, command center down in Portland. And if they need to change uh, something, they don't have to drive out here 30 miles and work on it, drive back and realize it didn't work. They can just do that in real live time. This is a livability issue for us. 
I think that one benefit uh, from having it, and I, I would say this is a major benefit of having your network owned by the citizens of, of the city of Sandy, is that uh, your, your governing board, your city council, is the board of, of that service as well. Um, you may run into someone on the governing board at the grocery store. Uh, they may live down the street from you. We did a, an extensive amount of forecasting and figuring out you know, where the budgets were going to lie for the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years um, before we made that decision to, to go out for a $7.5 million revenue bond because you know, for me, it's, I'm, I'm just a normal guy. I don't, I don't make a lot of money and to, to borrow something with that many zeros on the end of it was very intimidating. It's been an adjustment to, to sign these, these huge invoices for construction and you know, put my, my name on a, a million dollar invoice or, or million dollar plus invoices as we've seen these construction bills come through over the past seven months. We did not use taxpayers' dollars uh, because we didn't feel it was right for everyone to have to pay for something that maybe not everyone was gonna participate in. We looked at it as uh, uh, we could pay for it through revenue generated through use. You know, at the end of the day, we, I have confidence in the numbers. I have confidence that the take rate that we're seeing is exceeding what we actually modeled for. So we're, we're pretty comfortable that uh, this is going to be a financially viable project and we'll be able to cover those debt services costs um, over the course of the 20 years. The fiber for us is not the end game. It's just now that we can start the race. It's just really cool. So I, I enjoy um, being able to be a part of something that it's, it's like I tell you know my team at SandyNet, we're, we're developing something here that's gonna impact this city for the next 30, 40, 50 years, maybe even into the next century. Um, this really is uh, kind of like the power grid was in the early 1900s, we're changing the way that, that the community is going to interact with the outside world and, and within the community itself. Um, so there's just something satisfying about being able to, to build something that at the end of the day is going to impact people for generations.